Whoa. Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with the Magic Brad Show. And I've got my new friend, Marie Melvison on. Are you there, Marie? Hey, how are you? you look very comfortable. I am in my sunroom. Beautiful. Just hanging out, yes. And you're, you said that you're over in the eastern part of the world? Or yes, I East? am. I'm located in Richmond, Virginia. Okay, so I'm, I've a, been around there. I've been through there, kind of, because I, I lived in Asheville for a couple of years and drove yeah. to New York. So I think we've gone through there before. Yes. But right now I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the World Nerve Center headquarters. <laughs> How's the weather? It's a getting a little chilly. Today it's, it's pretty warm, but um, this is my wife's favorite time of year, and it's mine kind of like, oh, God, winter's coming. <laughs> Let's just I've, deal with it. I've seen the pictures. I'm like, how can anyone withstand the it's, wind? It's cold? not as bad as you think it is. Ah. It really is not. I mean, sometimes it's really, really cold, and it lasts for like a few months and stuff. But uh, the change of the seasons is beautiful, and we get the 100 plus degrees up here too. Some people wow. think that this is the tundra. I did an event here once, it was an international event, and people came with jackets, and they're all cold, and it was August, and it's 100 degrees, and they wonder, what the heck have I got this jacket for? I really don't need this jacket <laughs> in 100 degree weather. It's not that bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then that, that accent we got, the Minnesota accent, that came from Fargo, it's not Minnesota. Fargo's the Dakotas. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Well, let's talk a little bit about your business. I uh, checked out your website and things. You're in the world of photography. And you know what? Yeah. Photography's always been fascinating to me because it's one of those things where, like back in the day, the developing time and the aperture and the, the, the light's got to be just right and the focus and uh, there's so many different variables. How do you guys do that? Oh, it hasn't changed. The only difference is it's all gone digital and it's about um, capturing a subject or a frame in how you think they should be captured or in some cases if you want to add an artistic spill to it. So I shoot in RAW and RAW is like the digital version of a negative that you have in like the old Kodak packet when you go to Walgreens to drop off your 35 millimeter and you can just do so much with it. So. Um, I am in the business of uh, seeing people in their most vulnerable at their best. Oh, yes. That, that's a, so, that makes your brain start spinning going, what do you mean vulnerable and best? That's kind of scary. So you're in the best space in your life. You're in a really good mental head space, whether you lost, uh, lost a lot of weight, you are getting a gift for your loved one, you're feeling really good about yourself. And when you come see me, we're vulnerable. We're, we're in a very vulnerable space. Um, and most of the people, they're like, do I have to get naked? And I'm like, no, you don't have to if you want to. But by the time they're done towards the end of their session, they're feeling so good because I'm like their personal cheerleader. They're like, let's take it off. <laughs> and uh, my favorite part about it is when they see their photos after everything has been processed and um, edited and they're like, I never thought I looked this beautiful. And I'm like, you know, uh, you are a queen. You are a goddess. That's mainly for my female clients. And for my couples, they're like, wow, we're so sexy together. And I don't alter their bodies. I don't change anything. I just enhance the color, make them more alive, more vibrant. But even something as subtle as just a pivoting a little bit. Yeah. You, you, you guys have that eye, you know, you can kind of, you can kind of see it like looking into the sun and stuff. And personally, my, my brain is logical. I have a hard yeah. time. Like I, my background's in the event industry and I see these caterers come in and they, they put little things underneath the tablecloth and they raise it up and they put little sprinkles of rose petals and move little beads around and stuff and they make it look beautiful. And I'm like, I just got to throw a cloth over the top of it and set my business cards out for the show. And I just, I'm just challenged with that. So I'm, I'm just fascinated how you guys can just kind of fine tune stuff. There is a science to the photography. Um, like, for example, my sunroom is loaded with a lot of light, mm -hmm. but I have a ring light in front of me because without the ring light, you're going to see a dark cast because the light is to my back. 
Right, the shadows. So the thumb is you want um, the light to your front unless you want to create a silhouette. And so, so you can see my face. I have to put this on blast because I have natural light hitting me. And then I have artificial light to my front because it's so dark. And that's where the science come into play. The art is taking someone who doesn't really care about a certain part of their body and manipulating the pose to where it's like, no, this is still you. I didn't edit you. I just put you in a very uncomfortable pose where I have your back arched or your butt lifted or your hips, you know, tilted. And you're like, whoa, I have like this narrow waist or my chest is a little bit more forward. And it's interesting because I study poses for both males and females so they can look their best. And you have the ability to make someone feel comfortable mm -hmm. with that kind of thing. Yes. That's another thing. I got a, a friend here in Minneapolis. He, he was a photographer and he went through all the different phases of glamour photography and then, and then uh, like portrait stuff and corporate stuff and weddings. And then he got back into weddings and he's in a very interesting niche now because St. Paul has like got the most, uh, uh, the Hmong community. Yeah. So he does just Hmong weddings. That's his thing and he's it's just busy 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 because it's all referral business but oh, he right. just makes one person happy and then they refer so if you, you guys have that ability to just like i said just get people to just pose in a certain spot and then the light shines just right and it's an art <laughs> the comfort actually begins with the hair and makeup so you show up at my hair and makeup team um, for the ladies to come in and they will work on you. So you're feeling like a celebrity where you have one person doing your hair, another person doing your makeup. And so for an hour and a half, you're just cracking jokes, listening to music, you know, and by, by the time you, you know, that person comes and starts shooting with me, they're already relaxed and they're already feeling comfortable and they're like, okay, I'm ready. What should I wear? And most of the time, a lot of my previous clients will text me the night before. They're like, I'm so nervous. Should I, what do, I don't know what to bring. And I'm like, bring an entire suitcase. I will help you with um, the styling. So it's an entire concierge service where they feel like a complete and total celebrity. And it's I a, love it. Almost like a, a pampering at a salon. Yes, exactly. Cool. Except you capture the moment. So it lives forever. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. How long mm -hmm. have you been doing this? Um, I started uh, in 2019, the February of 2019, I started shooting. Um, I did 20 years in the military and I wanted something different. And I it's wanted, different. yes, <laughs> I wanted to express my creative artistic side. So the funny thing is I actually do more operations and logistics because I was a logistics officer first. Mm -hmm. And then the photography is like a small percentage of what I mainly do. I do a lot of behind the scenes bookkeeping and I write and I'm writing content and I'm constantly having to reformat and redesign everything. And I'm studying and I'm researching different poses because a lot of my clients are not a size two. So it's like, how do I help make someone who doesn't see the, you know, what they look like or their representation in the media and still make them feel beautiful. So I do a lot of research and reading. Sure. Yeah, you mm -hmm. got to have your thumb on the industry kind of, so to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a question that was in my head and then it took off on me. <laughs> that happens sometimes. <laughs> I know. That happens to me a lot. But is there a specific like uh, group of people that you like to work with, like male versus female, or in like a like CEO business owners? And I just had the the thing that came back. It was that you're an entrepreneur. You have, you're wearing a lot of hats. You got a lot yes. of things to do. Yes, yeah, not just taking the pictures. It's all the research that goes into it. So, who's your ideal? Who do you my, really like to work with? My ideal clients are survivors, people okay. who. Survive a traumatic experience in their life and they want to rediscover um, themselves from a marketing perspective my ideal client is someone with disposable income who can afford to take the time out to pamper and spoil themselves but from an emotional perspective survivors people who want to fall in love with themselves um, my favorite client that really touched my heart was a widow. I shot her and she sent me a text the night before. And she's like, I have an odd request. And I was like, what is it? 
she's like, can I bring my husband's ashes with me? I was like, yeah, I can do that. Um, I'm actually a death enthusiast. I watch, you know, like a lot of death um, YouTube videos about, you know, people's perspective on it, international perspectives. And so I'm doing research, like how do I incorporate her husband's ashes into this boudoir session? And so I sent the request like, hey, can you bring a picture of him? And so I kind of created this little memoriam with flowers and a candle and his ashes. And then we took a couple of shots. When she saw her album, she was in tears. And that's the ideal client that I would love to shoot is to help someone heal. And yeah. I'm the final step of their healing process. And then again, you capture that for, mm -hmm. I guess, eternity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's done. Very cool. And then I saw on your website, cause they actually, they come to your location. You have issues with that, with the COVID thing, don't you? I actually rent out um, various different locations. So I do have a workspace, but I don't shoot there unless I'm doing projects. But um, I like to rent out like an Airbnb house and it fits the vibe and the theme of the entire photo shoot. Oh, so cool. it's all about the theme if you want. Like I did one at a log cabin with some horses. I did another location where it was an industrial condo with a lot of windows and a lot of light. So it just depends on the theme. See, that's so cool because normally I think, okay, we got to come to your studio and you got the little rolls of paper and the lights and the little umbrella thingies and all that. You actually go to, you, you select a environment. Mm -hmm. It's an entire luxury experience. So, so that must be great for you to be able to go on to like Airbnb, research different venues and things. Yeah. And do you pretty much work within your area or is this kind of thing like someone out in Hollywood says, hey, I want you to come out and you um, budget that in? I can definitely travel, yeah. If they want me to come out and shoot, I like to plan out the entire experience. So it starts off with a consultation, give me an idea. What I like to do is as they're talking and I'm getting to know their personality, I start wargaming like, oh, this would be a really good fantasy vibe. I remember I did one photo shoot where we replicated a music video. It was like an R&B music video where she was just, you know, like really enjoyed herself and she's waiting for the, her lover to come and see her. And she's putting on a show. It was so fun. Oh, so you're uh, into storytelling and stuff too. I love telling stories through their uh, photos. And the most important aspect is um, the album piece because they get their digital file and they're like, oh my God, I'm so pretty. But when I arrange their pictures in an album, it tells a specific story where I shoot pictures of candles or one photo shoot I did, it was raining and we had a, a view of the city skyline. So I shot through the window and you could see the watermarks through the window. And I do very little Photoshop. It is all organic. So it's right there in the frame. I like that. I like, yeah. uh, I just take advantage of the natural light and mm -hmm. or the, uh, how you light it and stuff and just keep it raw and real. And then just stills or do you do video stuff? I actually do offer some video. Oh. Most of the time uh, when I do promo campaigns, I will uh, hire and outsource a model that fits the, the physical demographic of who I want to go after. So I love shooting curvy plus size women because that's my market demographic versus a smaller size to normal size girl. Um, I'm very inclusive, so it doesn't matter who you are. You can be male, female, trans. I'm all about hey, if you want to feel your best, you want to um, feel sexy, you want to feel sensual, come see me. You know, it doesn't very matter cool. what you identify as. So I'm very inclusive. Well, initially when I first saw that you're, you're a photographer, because normally I interview like entrepreneurs and marketing people and all this. So this is more on the <laughs> art, art side. I've, I've interviewed up some bizarre people, uh, UFO <laughs> experts and uh, the, the cigarette whisperer, you taught people how to quit smoking and stuff. But uh, initially I was thinking, okay, click, you know, click, click. But it sounds like you create a whole experience for people. And I can get into that because my background in the event industry, you know, they take a whole to hotel ballroom and they can convert it into something, you know, just with yeah. props and displays and floral and all that kind of stuff. And that's, you're an event planner kind of with a camera. I I do. I, I plan the location. I get my team. So you get an entire glam team. 
going on if you want your makeup or my guys it's pretty easy so i'm also your personal stylist and the travel agent <laughs> yeah travel agent and just kind of get every it's all about a theme and a mood yeah. so i want you to feel comfortable i want you to feel relaxed and then during the session i want you to have fun and i want you to you know just really be in the moment and then after your session, I want you to look back and say, you know, you did that. You achieved this milestone and you have this newfound sense of confidence where you can go into your workplace or your relationship and say, you know what? I am great. I am worthy. I am beautiful and I can do all of that. And I would like to say I like to plant that seed of confidence where months or years down the line, when you look at your pictures, you're like, yes, I did that. There we go. Something to remember. Mm hmm. I'm not good at keeping photographs myself. <laughs> My wife is good at it. So that's good to have a partner that does that kind of thing. So if someone is interested in hearing all this and they're going, that's intriguing. How are they going to get a hold of you? How do we, how do we connect? And do you have any stuff, something on your website? You can fill out a little form or something. So I have a consultation link. Um, we can do it by zoom or by telephone. You can reach me at www.bohemianvisions.com. Bohemian Vision. Bohemian Vision. You can follow me on Facebook or Instagram under Bohemian Visions Photography because someone else took Bohemian Visions. <laughs> and um, if you want to see how I work, uh, I'm on YouTube. So my videos on YouTube is more geared towards the potential client, not necessarily a tutorial where, you know, I kind of show you that I do help you with the posing. Posing is not one size fit all and you will have an amazing experience. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, Maria, I appreciate you, appreciate you taking the time. You just look so comfortable. That's what I really like. It's <laughs> normally like we're in this little box, but you're all chill. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I truly appreciate it. You want to stay on, we'll have a little chat, but other than that, I'm going to beam this up to the universe and keyword it and propagate it out and see if we can find some, hook some people for you. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Peace. Bye.